Assassin's Creed Odyssey is the newest game in the Assassin's Creed universe, set in the ancient, myth-soaked land of Greece. With this rich setting comes centuries of stories about jerk gods messing with the people they hate. So let's dive into the sea of Crete-sized lore of ancient Greece. Hi, I'm Jet Set with a leaderboard, and this is Assassin's Creed Odyssey Lore Explained. <laughs> We'll be looking at the real-world myths that the game's developers drew inspiration from, as well as how those myths were translated into the game itself. For starters, Cassandra, with a K, is one of the main characters in Assassin's Creed Odyssey. She's Amisios, a legendary mercenary who wields the powerful spear of Leonidas. She's also the grandchild of King Leonidas, former emissary kicker and 12-pack ab-haver. Mystios is a Greek word that means hired worker. It can also refer to a mercenary. The name Cassandra itself has mythological connections as well. Cassandra, with a C, was the daughter of King Priam of Troy. She was the most beautiful of Priam's daughters, and the god Apollo fell in love with her. Cassandra wasn't interested in Apollo, so he tried to buy her affection by giving her the power of prophecy. Cassandra took the power, but told Apollo to take a hike. The one thing you should never do is tell a lovesick god to take a hike. Apollo let her keep her foresight, but made it so no one would ever believe her visions. So she got a preview of a little thing called the Trojan War, but was helpless to stop it. Apollo sure was a swell guy. But let's get back to that awesome spear of Leonidas. The spear Cassandra uses is made by the Isu, the gods of the Assassin's Creed universe, and was broken at Leonidas' death. Fun fact, the spear is the first time players can wield an Isu artifact through the whole main game. It grants its wielder special powers that can really come in handy in battle, so it's no wonder Cassandra keeps it close at hand. Similarly, the historical Leonidas would have used a spear as part of his hoplite weapons. A hoplite is the most common type of soldier in a Greek city-state's army. In Athens, all men between 18 and 20 were required to serve in the army, especially in the 4th century BC. In Sparta, all men over 20 were part of a permanent professional army, and in the 5th century, all citizens had to take arms to defend their city. One of the Spartans' most popular weapons was the spear, also called a dory or doru. The spear was an important part of the strategy that helped the Greeks make a showing at Thermopylae. The long spears helped the Greeks compete with the Persians' superior numbers. Speaking of offense, the Spartan kick is a battle technique you can use in the game, a famous and super cool ancient move from ancient times. Or is it? Famous old historian Herodotus tells an interesting version of the Persian War. In Herodotus's version of the tale, Darius, Xerxes' father, sends messengers to Athens and Sparta. In Athens, the messenger is thrown into the pit of punishment, which sounds metal as hell. But in Sparta, they were actually just thrown into an old boring well. Still pretty metal, though. From here, we turn to another ancient and forgotten time, 1998. Famous comic book writer and artist Frank Miller published a comic book called 300, loosely based on the Battle of Thermopylae and the 1962 film The 300 Spartans. In the comic, Leonidas dramatically kicks a Persian emissary into a giant hole while saying the line to end all lines. You know, that line. It's been said on YouTube millions of times over, I'm not saying it again. The actual move itself has roots in MMA and Muay Thai kickboxing, where it's called a push kick. In the game, the Sparta kick is a handy maneuver that's great for knocking back powerful enemies. I mean, who doesn't love kicking rogue warriors off cliffs? And just like in the movie 300, it's already an iconic part of the game. Assassin's Creed Odyssey opens with the Battle of Thermopylae, an army of Spartans led by Leonidas and a rather lethargic crew of Persian soldiers duke it out as the game teaches you to spear and parry your way across the ancient battlefield. But not all the enemies you face in Assassin's Creed Odyssey are human or susceptible to being kicked off cliffs. Greek mythology provided the game developers at Ubisoft with a wide array of monsters and beasts for you to face off within the game. One of the most well-known in Greek mythology is the Minotaur. This Minotaur is revered by the people of Leto, a city on the island of Crete. They built a shrine to the creature which attracts visitors from all over. You also encounter a violent Cretan bull in the game. You know, just a regular, not half man, all bull bull. And that's no bull. Bulls have been associated with the island of Crete going back over 9,000 years. Shrines and statues of Aurochs, a now extinct species of giant cows, were of great importance to the Neolithic people who lived on the island. Knossos, often cited as the oldest city in Europe, was the capital 
symbol of the Minoan civilization, which also revered the bull. Bull imagery can be seen in the ruins of the palace there even today, which was so grand that it was said to have been designed by the famous inventor Daedalus, father of Icarus. And bulls aren't the only significant critters in the game. There's also an annoyingly difficult fight with a boar early on. So let's see where Ubisoft developers might have drawn their inspiration from. In myth, the fourth of Hercules' ten labors is to defeat the Arimanthian boar. The boar lived on Mount Arimanthus, which was sacred to the goddess Artemis. In typical Greek god fashion, Artemis sent the boar to ravage farms whenever she was feeling petty. This isn't the same boar as appears in Odyssey, but I honestly wouldn't mind Hercules' help with this one because that legendary boar in Odyssey whooped my ass more than once. And in fact, the various quests to hunt fantastic beasts in Odyssey were inspired by the legend of Hercules. The in-game boar is also from Greek mythology. It's the Caledonian boar. This boar is also sent by Artemis when another king doesn't perform proper rites. The Greeks really love tropes, it turns out. Many great heroes took part in the hunt to bring down the Caledonian boar, including Atalanta, a rare woman hero who also sailed with the Argonauts, and Meliger, the prince of Caledon and son of the king. Atalanta wounded the boar first, and Meliger finished it off, but he awarded Atalanta the prize for the kill because he had a big old crush on her. Meliger's uncles were ticked he gave the prize to a woman, and in the ensuing argument, Meliger killed them, and then his mom kills him. Greek stories all sort of end this way, with lots of emotional people just murdering each other. I think the moral of the story is just not to murder your uncles when you're mad, or maybe just do the darn rights to your vengeful god correctly in the first place. Like I said, gods are petty. My first few battles with the boar in Odyssey ended pretty much the same way, but instead of Meliger and his family getting slaughtered, I got taken out by the boar's rampaging piglets. Seems fitting considering the boar was pretty much trained by Artemis to ruin people's days. Did you think we were done with the vengeful petty god stuff? Not even close! Another creature you fight in the game is Medusa. The monster you fight is not the original Medusa, but an NPC who has been turned into a monster. In many versions of the myth, Medusa was born a beautiful girl, unlike all her siblings who were monsters. She was turned into a monster by Athena for doing it with Poseidon in Athena's temple. Jeez, Poseidon sure gets around. Not only did she have snakes for hair and turn people into stone, but she also had bronze hands and wings of gold. Medusa developed a reputation for being impossible to kill. So when a wicked king was trying to get rid of the hero Perseus, he asks Perseus to bring him Medusa's head. The hero uses a very shiny shield as a mirror to avoid looking at the monster directly and cuts off her head. Out of Medusa's neck come her children, one of whom is Pegasus, the flying horse. Perseus brings back Medusa's head and uses it to turn the evil king to stone, which is one way of getting rid of a boss you hate. Good news for your in-game encounter with Medusa, she is killable. And while she doesn't give birth to Pegasus in the game, you can still outfit your horse, Phobos, in some sweet Pegasus cosplay. Just head over to the store to purchase the Pegasus skin. Sadly, equipping the Pegasus skin doesn't allow your horse to fly, but it still looks cool. Another classic Greek monster who also appears in Assassin's Creed Odyssey is the Cyclops. The most famous tale of a Cyclops is in Homer's Odyssey, which is named after Super Mario Odyssey, obviously. Odysseus and his men find a cave full of food, which belonged to a Cyclops named Polyphemus. Odysseus gets the Cyclops drunk and tells the monster his name is Nobody. While the Cyclops is passed out drunk, Odysseus blinds the poor guy with a stick and takes all his food. When the Cyclops wakes up, he starts screaming that he's been blinded and robbed, and who can blame him? When the other Cyclops asks him who did it, all he could say was Nobody. In this version of the tale, the Cyclops are the children with Poseidon. Go figure. So, when Odysseus brags about his clever idea, the sea god makes Odysseus' journey so much worse. In the older myths, the Cyclops are the children of the Titans, Uranus and Gaia. The Titans were the rulers before the gods, but the old guard had to leave at some point, and the Olympians end up killing the Titans in a grand war. So to visualize the weird ancient Greek family tree, think of the Cyclops as the gods' cousins, sort of. They were the helpers of the blacksmith god Hephaestus, and when the volcano Mount Etna would rumble and smoke, it was said to be that the Cyclops were at work. You can find a volcano in the game, and when you enter, Cassandra mentions Hephaestus, but we can't be certain that it's actually Mount Etna. And you won't find the Cyclops there either. The first Cyclops you encounter in Odyssey is a little smarter than his mythical counterpart. He's a gang leader who threatens Cassandra. He has just one eye, which Cassandra is always threatening to gouge out, hence his name. But you can find another full-on monstrous lumbering Cyclops later in the game. Like every fight with a one-eyed baddie, just go for the eye to take down this mythical giant. We've covered some myths, but Assassin's Creed is all about historical fiction. Remember in high school when you learned all about ancient Greece? 
us neither. So here's a crash course. The Peloponnesian War was fought between the city-states of Athens and Sparta from 431 to 404 BCE. The conflict was named after the region both cities were located in, the Peloponnese in southern Greece. Nearly all of the city-states were involved in the conflict, taking sides with either Athens or Sparta. The war began when Athens became allied with the colony of Corsera. Land-powered Sparta feared naval-powered Athens' expansion. So when Athens broke their peace treaty after the alliance with Corsera, Sparta told Athens they better chill out or get ready for war. Famous leader of Athens, Pericles, decided that they were far past diplomacy, so Sparta had their ally attack an Athenian ally and all Tartarus broke loose. It's in these fraught and dangerous times that the bulk of Assassin's Creed Odyssey takes place. Moving on to ancient Greece's gentler, more sensitive side. When you think of ancient Greece, you might think of pottery and pristine, white, naked marble statues. There's just something so hashtag aesthetic about those broken stone heads and symmetrical buildings. But science has come through yet again to prove to us that everything we know about history is a lie. First it came for the dinosaurs, then Pluto, and now the sculpture wing at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. While the theory that ancient Greeks embraced color has been around for centuries, it was generally laughed at. That is, until recently, when ultraviolet light proved that those famous naked statues were once painted in bright colors with loud designs. And it wasn't just the statues. The temples and other buildings were also a riot of color. Another hidden yet fun tidbit, bronze statues appear with empty eye sockets because the eyes were made separately from the rest of it. They were exceedingly creepy. Now, how does the, all of this tie into Assassin's Creed Odyssey? When working on the environments for the game, the artist wanted to keep things as authentic and historically accurate as possible which means out with the white and in with the wild rainbow color palette. So while you're visiting the Oracle at Delphi in the game, take a closer look at the architecture. Maybe stare into a statue's baby blues and watch it stare back at you. Both the sculptors and the game developers worked hard on those statues. Delphi was the location of an important shrine to Apollo. It was originally called Pytho, after a story in which Apollo killed a snake at the site. The Greeks believed it was the center of the world. It was said that Zeus released two eagles, one to fly east and the other west, and they met again at Delphi. The stone that stood outside Apollo's temple was called the Omphalus, or navel. The oracle was then called the Pythia, and was the priestess of Apollo. After performing sacrifices and purification ceremonies, the Pythia would deliver prophecies. The oracle at Delphi is a real-ass place you could actually go to in Greece. The temple was rediscovered by French archaeologists in 1880 in all its scenic beauty. It's also a real-ass place in the game, and you'll meet Herodotus right there after he has an enlightened chat with the Pythia. We may not be an oracle with the wisdom of the gods, but we do have some neat extras that we share with our mailing list. Just go over to leaderboard.nyc slash email to stay in the loop. I predict developer interviews, exclusive videos, and more. Speaking of culture and appreciating the fine arts, one of the best places to check out ancient paintings and designs is at the Acropolis, which the game has dutifully recreated in garish color. The Acropolis is the peak of Athenian architecture and philosophy. After the Persian wars, Athens was the most powerful state in Greece. Pericles ordered the building of the Parthenon, the most well-known building in the Acropolis. When you think of ancient Greece, you probably picture the Parthenon. The Parthenon is dedicated to Athena, the patron of Athens. You can't talk about the Parthenon without discussing Socrates. In Assassin's Creed Odyssey, you get the privilege of meeting the thinker himself, and taking side quests for him, of course. The two things everyone can agree about him was that he was very smart and very ugly. At least he's more remembered for his big brain instead of his face. He once visited the Oracle at Delphi where he was told he was the wisest man ever. To prove it to himself, he went around to all the brainiest people in Athens and asked them questions to prove their wisdom. It turned out that they were all talk and actually knew next to nothing. Socrates was forced to conclude he was in fact the wisest person because he knew how much he didn't know. Jeez, he sounds like he's fun at parties. At least he could be helpful during Jeopardy? He's maybe most well known for his death. The authorities in Athens put Socrates on trial because he often supported Sparta and criticized the status quo. They sentenced him to death by drinking poison. And even though he had the chance to escape to safety, Socrates chose death instead. If that isn't the most ancient Greek thing, I don't know what is. You know what? I take it back. Socrates must have been a party animal. He never refused a drink. So if you want to party like Socrates or just have an oracle tell you that you're the smartest person around, dive into Assassin's Creed Odyssey. I'm Jetset with the leaderboard and thanks for watching Assassin's Creed Odyssey Lore Explained. Did we miss any bits of Greek history? Let us know in the comments. Don't forget to click the bell icon to become part of the notification squad. Wanna 
be as wise as Socrates? Go watch our God of War lore explained video as well. And if you like getting more from your games, subscribe to the leaderboard, your home for video game facts.